So we took this uh, fuel transfer pump off of a Caterpillar excavator this morning. We got over there. We thought the O-ring was blown out of it, but it was more than just the O-ring being blown out of it. You can see where that O-ring, that it broke the lid and blew it completely out of there. So we had to make a new lid for the transfer pump to hold it on. Tried to get a hold of Caterpillar this morning. I'm still waiting for them to call me back. I don't know what their problem is, but, you know, I'm not going to sit here and wait for parts. I just make my own. I had to get some longer screws to put in it because mine is so much heavier than the factory one that the screws had to be about 3 16ths longer. But it'll be there when I'm dead and gone. But I want to go through uh, Caterpillar fuel systems and the transfer pumps and how they work. And uh, they're really not complicated. It's a supply pump. It sucks fuel out of the tank. It pressurizes it to about 40 PSI and puts it up into the injection pump where the injection pump takes it from there. But inside of this little transfer pump, there's three check valves. There's a check valve in here, there's a check valve in here, and there's a check valve in here. And I keep them in my truck all the time because I have replaced a lot of them. And this is what they look like. They look like a little metal disc. And what they are is a one-way check valve. And they let fuel go in one direction only. So if the inlet check valve gets bad, when the pump tries to pump, it just sits there and goes back and forth and it doesn't build up pressure. Outlet check valve goes bad, same thing. So if you ever check, if you got an engine that's, that's running no power or whatever and you're checking for fuel pressure and your fuel pressure is not where it belongs, if it's not around 40 pounds, you know, it could be less. The book says 25 to 40, but if it's around 35 or 40 pounds, you're good. So you need to keep an eye on that. The other check valves I was going to show you here is the hand primer pump. So if you take a hand primer pump and uh, it won't pump, or it's just going back and forth, if you look here, you'll see inside that hand, in that hand primer pump, there's another one in and out. So... If your hand primer pump ever gives you trouble, you know what to look for. There's two valves here, three valves in the transfer pump. This is off of 3304. The 3306, all of them, they're all about the same. Sometimes the housings change just a little bit, but they still have those one-way check valves, and they still run about 40 pounds of pressure. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you're having troubles with your fuel system, and I'm going to take you down here in a little while since we're on this subject, and we're going to, I'm going to show you on the 963 down there, which is a 3304 engine, where to check fuel pressure and, and how to do that. But always remember that these little valves, they can give you a lot of trouble. And I've replaced, over the years, I've replaced a lot of them. I don't ever buy a pump. I just replace the valves. You can buy anything for this pump that you want, as long as you can get somebody to wait on you. But anyhow, so with that being said, we'll go down here and uh, and I'll show you this 963, and we'll go through the fuel system on the tractor a little bit, and you'll get a little better understanding of how it works. So this is the 963. If you look right here, you're going to see this is a suction screen. Holds about a half of a quart or a quart. And then here's your hand primer. And your fuel line comes into your screen, comes out of your screen, and it comes up to your transfer pump. So this right here is your transfer pump. The one I just showed you on the table. So that's your transfer pump. It bolts onto the injection pump with two bolts. One's right here and the other one's in behind here. 
the fuel comes out of the transfer pump and it comes up and it goes into the secondary fuel filter where it gets fueled again and then it goes on into the head assembly of the fuel injection pump. So now most of these have got a, a quick couple fitting someplace around the fuel filter housing like one could go on right here but a lot of times this plug right here is a bleeder plug so when you're hand priming you take this is an o-ring boss clean around it real good and then hand prime until you get fuel all the way up to here when it's a steady stream of fuel coming out of there you know you're good to go well you can also take that's an o-ring boss or an SAE thread you can also take and I'm going to take you back inside and I'm going to show you the fuel gauge that you can screw onto this to check your fuel pressure so you're wanting 40 pounds maximum you know between 30 and 40 you're, you're, you're doing good so check your fuel pressure right here if you've got 30 or 40 pounds of fuel pressure there there's no reason that that engine should be running running bad at all so a lot of times too uh, like in that track hole they don't run they don't run a, a suction screen like this right here so actually the line comes right out from the tank and it goes into the transfer pump and there's be there'll be a small screen in here and it's very small so it doesn't take much to plug it up so if you're having problems getting fuel and you don't have a, a uh, screen like this then you need to take this fitting out of here and you'll find a little screen in there and see if that screen is uh, it's got a bunch of junk in it you know but just so we took you down we showed you where to take the plug out of the top of the fuel injection pump housing and this is the fitting that I use once I take that plug out it's an o-ring boss SAE clean around that plug take that plug out screw this right in there and then you can take and snap your gauge onto the end of that so this is my favorite I snap the gauge on it I've got about a 15 foot lead I can take this all the way up into the operator seat and I can run the machine so if it's an intermittent problem you can sit there and run the machine and make sure your fuel pressure is staying close to 40 pounds if not you know it's in a fuel and if it does something different and it still has 40 pounds then you know you need to go look in someplace else but I like a gauge that is centered around 40 pounds I don't want to run a thousand pound gauge to check for 40 pounds and I don't want to run a 50 pound gauge I like to have a, a gauge that's dedicated for fuel so you can see how it discolors it anyhow but I've had this for years it works really well if you don't have a quick coupler you can just have a number four JIC and buy an o-ring face SAE and screw it into the housing with a number four JIC on it and screw your gauge on there there's nothing wrong with that a lot of times you'll find a machine that's already got these little uh, quick couplers on there and if it does you know that's great you can just snap onto it real quick you can check everything you need to check and uh, move on to the next step but it's pretty handy to have the quick couple this digital gauge is nice but it's expensive and uh, I've, I've got a quick coupler on it too but this thing goes from five pounds to ten thousand pounds and it's accurate just about everywhere you use it so I I check uh, case drain pressure with it because you know if case drain pressure is usually like three pounds or something like that I use this for checking case drain pressure all the time but it's good no matter where where you're at in the scale if you're from five pounds to ten thousand pounds it's it's pretty accurate but accuracy comes with the price but with that being said I mean if you're having a fuel problem you know what I like to do is I like to watch the exhaust pipe when I go to start my machine and I see when I'm trying to start my machine is there any smoke coming out the exhaust pipe at all any unburned fuel 
Is it black? What, what color is it? What's it doing? If you get if you get to cranking on something and there is absolutely nothing coming out of that exhaust pipe, then you know that you're not getting any fuel. So then you need to go back and, and check your fuel pressure and and if your fuel pressure is normal, you know, you need to keep moving on down the, down the line and try to figure out, you know, why why are we not pumping fuel? But I I, I follow trucks going down the highway and I'll sit there and instead of looking at their back bumper I'm looking at their exhaust pipe. I'm watching their exhaust pipe to see how their engine and their trucks running. If you see little intermittent puffs of smoke or if you see a big cloud of black smoke or you don't see anything but heat fumes. Just a real good uh, way to look at something to see how something's running. I uh, had a guy call me not too long ago and his, his uh, little dozer wasn't running right and it was it was smoking a lot out the exhaust pipe and I told him I said you need to take your air cleaner out and look at your air cleaner I said you might have a little friend come pay you a visit or something you know well sure enough he had a mouse get up in there and build a nest and started choking the air off but uh, that's just some of the things you that you gotta watch for and the more that you pay attention to what's going on with that machine then the, the better chances that you're going to have of fixing it and fixing it right and, and uh, doing it in an orderly fashion, you know. But So, I hope you learned a little something about Caterpillar fuel systems. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel so you can see what we're going to talk about next. We're always doing something a little bit different, whether it's an old tractor or, or an engine or, or whatever. So... We'll just tell you, thanks for watching.